Hello. So, people have seen some of these pictures here that I've posted on the group. So, I thought I'd try to explain how I did them. So, if we first of all take a look at the pictures, we the one thing to note really about them um, they've all got like a, a bright vibrant look and feel to them um, and they all tend to be quite dark around the edges and I think that's key to this type of thing working because uh, the outside of the edges if you see too much detail and then you're not focused on what's going on in the middle um, Here, I wasn't sure if this was going to work, but um, it seemed it seemed to do quite well. I quite liked it. Um, but anyway, let's dig into why and how we can uh, produce the shot. So I've got a folder here full of pictures that I've exported over the years. Um, we could pick up anything really. Um, what I'm looking for is something that has got a dark edge. Uh, let's go down a little bit more, see what else we can find. Something that's got a dark edge. Here you go, here's one of Imogen's photos. Dark edges, pink in the middle, nice and bright. So what we're going to first of all do is open that up in Photoshop. And the first thing we want to do is to convert the image to a smart layer or a smart object, should I say. The reason we do that is because we're going to add a, a couple of filters. And if we add the filter um, and we want to change it or tweak it, then we can change and tweak it and then we can see what the overall um, overall image it looks like at the end. So once we've done this, the first thing I want to try and do is we want as much detail, as much information when we're doing this as possible. Um, I seem to think that 8 bits isn't enough, 16 bits is better, so we'll go up to uh, image mode and then just change it to 16 bits. So now we've got a 16 bit image, anything we do, any blurs, anything like that will be in 16 bit so it'll just be a bit more smoother so the next thing we need to try and do is work out how we uh, how we get like this sort of vanishing point um, aspect where we're obviously looking right to the center of the image so something you can do obviously is you can go into Photoshop and you can blur and you can do a radial blur and you can do a zoom. If we go all the way to 100% zoom, you'll see we kind of get this blur that goes to the center. Okay. What we don't have here is much detail. And as you can see from these images here, we've got quite a lot of sharp edges. And it's the sharp edges that, um, that make this work. So if we just undo this a second. We can now apply a different filter. So we can apply all sorts of different filters to pixelate the image and actually make it look horrid to begin with. Um, mesotint um, appears to be a good one. Um, we can choose to make it look in lines or strokes. Strokes is more coarse. Um, long strokes obviously would give an effect. So if we stick with medium strokes for now, I've tried all, all of them, uh, different pictures that it works slightly differently with. So if we click OK, we can completely ruin our image. But now when we go into our blur and we do our radial blur, what happens is these blurring parts are more streaky, more liney, which is quite good. The thing with it at the moment, is that it's, yeah, it's not very smooth. So if we do the same thing again, 
it looks a little bit more smooth, a little bit more soft, but still with the hard edges. You can see down here we're in the smart um, filters they show, so you can see every single um, step that we've done, and you can then go back in if you wanted to um, edit the filter and then change something about it if you didn't want to go quite so much. Okay. Once we've got that far, the next thing we want to try and do is add some kind of spin to it. So we can distort and twirl the image. Twirling the image will uh, give you all kinds of strange, weird and wonderful aspects and looks. But if you go to about about 150 minus 150 just to start with you can obviously gauge this later on if you want to the key part that I've noticed is that with this you have to make a point of, of the number you're using here so we've got our 12 and that's um we'll just have a look at back at one of these images it's kind of getting there isn't it but still it only appears to be going one way and this here seems to be going all over the place so let's just get rid of that if we um, if we now go and do another 12 but this time instead of minus 150 we do the positive 150 what you'll notice happens is it all goes back to normal because of course we've turned off the 12 we've undone the 12 we've twirled in the opposite direction let's say but the key part here is that um, we've got two sets of filters here now what I suggest we do then is we change the way that these filters or these uh, these layers all blur together or blend if we change them to lighten then only the lightest parts of the filter will show up We can do the same thing on both of the uh, both of those levels, those layers. And now we've got an image that looks a little bit more exciting, let's say. So if we compare that now, we kind of got some sort of similar effect, haven't we? Now, of course, if you want to, you can go and you can change a twelve. You can say, do you know what, I like it, but I want to see what 100 looked like rather than 150. And we'll, we'll do the same thing in the back, in the opposite direction. So now you can see it's just slightly different. So it's always nice just to see the differences there. Now at the moment, this image is more or less done. So what I'm going to do here now um, is we'll save it and we'll go into Lightroom. But just as an option, if you wanted to, you could duplicate this layer. And I've done it on one of those images that uh, I've shown before. In particular, this one here. So I've duplicated the layer. And actually what I want to just do now, we can do Command-T. It tells us it will turn the, all the smart filters off while we work out what we're doing. But what I want to do is I want to turn this upside down. And now if we hit OK to that, it's going to do the same thing but upside down. Obviously we want to turn it on to lighten. But we get another aspect. We can decide whether or not we like it. that's too bad and it's a bit dark it's a bit bright around the outside now but let's just save this and then have a look at it in uh, in Lightroom and see if we can just tweak it a little bit now this image was never quite large in the first place it's only about 1300 pixels wide uh, I suggest you don't necessarily put an 80 megapixel image into this because all of those things we've just been doing will take an absolute lifetime um, currently my uh, fans are going quite crazy 
So we're just going to uh, just going to export this, and I'm going to choose to export it into one of my folders that goes into Lightroom. I've made a folder called Twelves. I might as well call it that. That's fine. So we've got our image. If we want to save it as all our TIFF file and stuff, we can. But I'm not worried for this uh, demonstration. So now it's just load up Lightroom, and I'll just bring that in to Lightroom here. I was actually going to play with the uh, another image there. We might do that as well another time. It's one from one somebody in the group. So we've got our image. I'm going to stick a vignette. I'll get rid of that dark area. Um, oh, sorry, the light area around the outside and make it a bit more dark. Um, but we can see we've got lots of lovely little colours here coming through. We've got the greens. And we've got the pinks and things and the oranges. So because we've got that, the first thing I want to just do is just increase the vibrance. Just bring them really forward. We might just want to drop some of the highlights. But then we can play around with the textures. And you notice the textures really do help us to get some of the edges of this. So finally, we hit sharpening. So I always just go straight to the top on these. We have as much red as we can, and we only want to sharpen this center area here. If you want to later, we can turn it down. I think the larger the image, the better the sharpening works. But I quite like that as an image, it works quite well. So I'll just finish with it full screen and that's our finished image.